Thank you, everybody. It's such an honor to be here and to be invited here. I'm really glad to see people in real life. As a CTO, you see those video conferencing solutions way too much. So um, I'm, going to focusing, I'm going to be focusing on di uh, disrupting digital barriers for next generation. Uh, what Doreen was talking about made it sort of sound that it has been easy for Estonia. It has not been easy for Estonia. For 30 years, we've been building our digital infrastructure, our digital services through all the difficulties that could be encountered. Uh, but in many ways, a lot of lessons have been learned. A lot of different challenges have been overcome. And we would really like to uh, be part of the community that spearheads the way forward so that others perhaps don't have to uh, take and learn those lessons the same hard way as we did. My, one of my key takeaways here, or something to really kick things off, is that for innovation to happen, we need to stop reinventing the wheel. Uh, I think this is one of the very critical parts of it. I think that whenever we wake up, whenever new generations come around, we start looking at the same problems over and over again, but the human kind as such is not changing as rapidly as technology is. So we tend to start reinventing the wheel over and over again. I am uh, Christo, uh, the CTO for the Government of Estonia. A lot of you here, a lot of you online, have uh, inspired me to do this job that I'm doing today. I'm incredibly honored uh, to spearhead uh, Estonia's engineering community from the public sector side. It's a fascinating job uh, and fascinating opportunity because I really like the, th uh, the idea that Estonia is small enough where a single man's job makes a huge difference, but we are large enough for it to matter for, uh, matter for international community, like all of you here today. I will start things off by saying that software engineering is not magic. And this is an engineering saying, uh, engineer saying this. It's not magic, but it's often sold as if it is magic. It's often sold as if you need custom-built solutions for absolutely everything. You need tailor-made suits. When in reality, this is extremely cost-prohibitive. This is the lesson that Estonia has learned, because we had to build a lot of those tailor-made suits, because none of those things were out there before. But I think that moving forward, we can avoid this. Uh, a lot of the principles are based on Conway's law. Melvin Conway, already in 1967, said that if you give any organization, any digital government, uh, a chance to build their perfect information system, their perfect digitalization ecosystem, then they're going to build it based on their own processes, their own functions as they are at that point of time. But as COVID show, uh, has shown us, is that when something new is introduced, when the culture changes, when the requirements change, then you're extremely tackled by the fact that you now need to change. And if your digital government is not flexible for changing, then it's going to be a big problem. You need to start reinventing the wheel again, building perhaps stuff up from the ground up. I'm challenging the fact that maybe you don't have to. Uh, in October of last year, there was a joint declaration for powering digital transformation, um, which is something you can find on YouTube, which is something that I'm going to be talking a little bit about, or at least one little nugget of it. Uh, if you are interested in this, you can learn more about what this joint declaration is about. But the idea there is that digitalization shouldn't be this magic that we are keep selling for every government, every organization that perhaps is not where Estonia is today. Perhaps halfway through the same thing. So um, the main thing is that standardization and degree principles are useful for everybody for consumer, for company, for government, as well as global interoperability as a whole. As a CTO, I have been personally disappointed by the fact that when COVID happened, the international interoperability became worse. It did, be, it did not become better, despite all the tools that we have today. I think we need to take a lesson from this. We need to learn from this and find solutions that make international interoperability more uh, like cooperating better and more interoperable as a whole. I think telecom services and tech standardization is an example to follow. In the 80s, TM Forum managed to standardize, to so start working towards standardizing a lot of the principles and a lot of the ways how different technologies uh, had to cooperate and interoperate. I think that digital governments and digital organizations in large scale need to do the same. I think we are at the right moment to do this now so that in 20 years and 30 years' time, we can have a far more interoperable uh, digital communities and digital governments. 
So what am I actually talking about here is a very specific project that has been kicked off um, in the last few years. Uh, and the idea there is to offer your digital government building blocks as building blocks. If you need digital identity, then you can pick this building block and then you can configure it to your liking and make it work. If you need to keep track of who is in your population or what properties someone owns, then you can pick a registry building block. If you need to make them interoperable with one another or if, if you need to authenticate uh, someone having access to a specific service, you can pick another building block from there. The idea there is that all of those building blocks are a shared concern between different digital governments. Your digital identity, your plastic card might be different, the technology in the background might be different, but the building block as such is very, very similar. So you don't need to reinvent this, you don't need to start building it from the ground up. You can learn from the lessons of others, you can use technologies that others have already provided. But the building blocks alone are not enough. You also need to have very specific cross-functional requirements. Now, cross-functional requirements are something that make sure that all of those different building blocks that fit different roles, that fit different functions, are interoperable between one another. Because you want your digital identity to have a way of working together with your population registry, for example. You need to have tools, you need to have machinations ready so that these things can actually cooperate. It will help with international interoperability as well. So these cross-functional requirements and principles are the defining glue that make sure that all of those building blocks that are separate for function and role are able to cooperate. And this is very key, just, just like uh, Melvin Conway said, to make sure that you are both flexible, but at the same time, the ecosystem as a whole can function so that your organization or your government is supported with the services that you need to provide. But again, now that you have building blocks and now that you have these cross-functional requirements ready, it's still not good enough. How can a government or an organization that isn't digital enough today get any kind of benefit from these just because they are there? So you need a marketplace and platform. You, can, you need to find like, what building blocks are useful for you. Which building block could solve this problem that you have today? And which building block could be something that perhaps you'd like to avoid? Perhaps something you want to improve upon yourself. So you can see that, hey, you know, they're using this kind of population registry. I can use something very similar. Uh, perhaps some governments and organizations have given good feedback for certain building blocks. So I can set it up myself. How do I need to set it up? All the guides, all the support functionalities are, are there. So you can actually see uh, how to do this and how to make it happen. Last but not least, in order to make the whole picture work, again, marketplace alone is not enough. Even together with building blocks, it's not enough. Even with cross-functional requirements and principles agreed is not enough. You actually need community-driven development tools and the community as a whole. You need private sector companies as consultants to help you how you can actually set up those uh, building blocks. You need private sector companies to be perhaps develop some of those building blocks to help you to make sure that you have the right tools for the job. But regardless of which kind of building blocks you choose, they all have to be interoperable. They all have to fit a certain very specific standard so that to make sure that you can be flexible, you can change, and you can actually do your digitalization quicker than Estonia did in 30 years. And this is very, very critical for this, because digital government as such, you, can, you cannot take it off the shelf. As one of the key ideas that have been uh, thrown around in Estonian public sector is that you cannot just take Estonia's model as a whole and make it work in another digital government. It's never going to work. But you can take bits and pieces. You can take lessons from what we are using. You can use some of those tools, but not the others because no government is alike, such as no organization is alike. Everybody is slightly, slightly different. So these community-driven development tools and community as a whole will help you get there. You can perhaps, uh, I know that uh, a lot of African countries have uh, asked Estonia, you know, like how we can actually do this digitalization. And when I'm asking them in return, like what are your main problems? Then the most frequent answer is that we need to, know who our population is, who our citizens are. Like the very bare bones issues such as, you know, having a population registry, having your property registries, having your digital identities. These are the corner, like the, the foundational layers of a digital government. 
And you really should not reinvent those wheels. You can pick them up technically, you can pick them up off the shelf and get them up and running as quickly as possible. So um, my key takeaways here that I would like you to uh, uh, take on board with you is that the key idea of building your digital government in this way is the ability to build your digital government or organization that looks like you, your culture, your laws and requirements. As Melvin Conway said, it's going to be different, every single government, every single culture. But the shared part, you don't need to reinvent. You don't need to reinvent what you share and actually have in common. Because we do share a lot of things. Even as people, we are incredibly different, but we share a lot in between one another. It's going to be like, I told you earlier that you know, software engineering is not uh, uh, magic, right? So this uh, sentence uh, sounds like a spell. Uh, so <laughs> cloud native and secure autom autonomous scalable building blocks. You can find engineers to explain each and every uh, word there for you. But I'm again saying this is not magic. A lot of those tools we don't have to build from the ground up. Cloud has been around for a long time. I'm quoting Melvin Conway here multiple times today. The quote is from 1967. This is not something. I've been a CTO of the government since 2018. This is ages since 1967. So we are actually still relying upon the shoulders of other giants before us. And Estonia is one of those shoulders to actually build upon. You can learn lessons from us. You can take our guidance. Uh, you can take guidance of a lot of people that are in this audience today or that are watching online today because we have all already learned all of those lessons. And we want to uh, make sure that the next step, next generation is going to be more flexible and more scalable. And obviously all of those magical building blocks uh, would work in an interoperable ecosystem. This is key. If any kind of digital government is built without the principle that they are interoperable in your ecosystem, then you are already starting off from the wrong foot. If someone is going to tell you that, hey, okay, you need a population registry, we need to tailor make this for you separate API, separate configuration, everything separate, then you are already off the wrong track. Because once again, COVID happens, you need to change all of those. You need to have an ecosystem that is interoperable. So all of those uh, building blocks also need to follow common standards and principles. They need to follow the same ideas and same ideologies, same protocols, so that again, you can make them interoperable. And last but not least, they are made through open source with software as a service as an option. I'm a huge fan of open source. I think that, uh, that software, again, as I said, is not magic. Uh, it's, it's just you know, automated like routines, automated manual routines that are represented by technology. And I think that open source is a way forward. Education, knowledge as such, uh, such shouldn't be an IP. It should really be open source, especially when it comes to digital governments especially when it comes to technologies and software that has been built by taxpayers' money. And obviously, last but not least, we still keep software as a service as an option. I think that the private sector can also provide and put up and start running API-driven building blocks as well, so that you can have some of the stuff that is not perhaps open source. But I think that the core foundational uh, building blocks need to really be open source for both auditability, for both reusability, and uh, for community being able to develop each and every single building block for the benefit of not just your digital government, but as I said, international interoperability as a whole. So um, my call here for everybody is to get involved or at least stay in the loop, because a project that is trying to fix or address all of those uh, building blocks is already ongoing uh, with uh, Estonia, with our partners, and a lot of people are, that are already uh, here today as well. Uh, the website is uh, govstack.global. Uh, do visit it. There is a join the community button there. Uh, you, it's like we are not asking uh, money there. We are not uh, essentially uh, asking for you to be suddenly in all those expert groups, but it's an opportunity. You can, if you want, to help us spearhead that direction. We have a lot of international experts here already that are involved. A lot of work has already been done. And it's 
progressing really, really greatly. I think that what we are able to do with digital government through this govstack.global is something that TM Forum did for telecommunications in the late 80s. So I think that in the next 10 to 20 years, digital governments are going to build on these kind of standardized building blocks and they're going to be helpful for international interoperability and digital governments as a whole. So keep this address in mind, uh, check in there, uh, catch me in, in the coffee breaks. So thank you from my side and thank, thank you for you listening. Sir. Thank you. Please, big applause. Thank you.